So in the previous video, we took a look at how we set up our colliders in the rain problem code. So this is uh, how we set up the people moving across the parking lot. The only piece we haven't really taken a look at yet is the creation of these graphs. Um, so let's take a look at how we set those up because this requires uh, us to manage two graphing windows. Because what you saw in the video is that it can be a little bit misleading to look just at the raindrops versus time. If you look at the raindrops versus di distance, it tells a little bit better story. Um, so what we've got here are two G displays set up. One we're gonna call time graph and one we're gonna call dist, dist graph or distance graph. Um, what this G display command does is it tells vPython to create a graphing display. Now you don't have to tell it to do this because as soon as you tell vPython to create a G curve, it's automatically going to set up a G display. The reason you want to do this though is if you want to refer back to that G display and modify things about it, or if you need to uh, update graphs on both G displays. Because if you just put in a G curve or a plot, it's gonna assume you're working in the most recent window. Um, and so what this is doing is this is just saying we wanna have two graphing windows to manage, one called time graph, one called disk graph. Um, they don't do very much at first. Um, basically what we do in the collider uh, class is we assign to each collider. So we, we attach to each of these objects a time graph and a dist graph. Um, it hasn't yelled at me for giving these properties the same name as these windows. Um, if vPython yells at you uh, for something about that, let me know uh, or just change the, the name of one of these. Um, but basically what we're doing here is we're saying I want you to set up a g-curve, meaning I want you to set up a graphical curve that has a color given by call, the same uh, color argument that we're putting in for the box up here. And then this argument is telling it what g-display to use. If you omit this argument, it uses whichever g-display was created most recently, so whichever one is on top, so to speak. Um, and so all this does is it says, I want you to make this graph in the time graph window, and I want you to make this graph in the distance graph window. So it knows where to send the data that we are collecting here. Um, and what you see here is when we, when we come down to our loop here, when we're looking at the, uh, when we're looking at moving the, I think it's, uh, it's when we're moving the range or we're moving the colliders. Let's find out. Uh, it must be when we're moving the colliders so we can loop over all of them. Yeah, yeah, it's back up here. When we go into move underscore colliders, you notice it had to call an extra function or an extra argument here for the time so that we can add the current data point to our graph. Um, so here what we're doing, we've got our, our movement set up and we're updating our edges of the collider just like we saw last time. And then the last two lines we need to look at are where we're adding one more point to each graph. So again, this is within the collider list. So this is uh, looping over all the colliders. This part is checking whether we are, whether that collider has made it to the car yet. And then this part checks for, or doesn't check it, it adds the most recent data point to the time graph. So this is saying, I want you to add to the time graph. I want you to plot one more point with the position given by T and on the horizontal axis and this collider's number of drops on the vertical axis. Now this subroutine doesn't know whether collider.drops, whether call.drops has been updated, right? That update takes place in the move raindrop. So this thing could be the same as it was last time. It could be different. This thing doesn't uh, discriminate between those two. It just adds another point to the graph. Um, same thing here. We plot on the distance graph. Uh, a, a new point with a with along the x-axis given by the collider's x-coordinate, and then again the same uh, uh, vertical uh, uh, coordinate call dot drops, the number of drops. So this is giving you drops versus time. This is giving you drops versus horizontal position. Um, and so that's really all we need, and it gives us such a wealth of information uh, looking at our problem. Now I removed the uh, the yellow collider. Uh, that I added last time. So we just have our red and our green one here. And we can see that as these folks move across a parking lot, our graphs begin to grow. Um, you can see on, on this one, in this example, they grow at more or less the same rate. Uh, the red one gets a little bit of a head start, but then the green one catches up here. Since we're dealing with random events here, you expect them to have overall the same slopes. You expect these you know, little 
uh, jumps of one getting ahead of the other to cancel. So this is actually a really good example of seeing the red and green grow at the same rate versus time, uh, rate as a function of time, so raindrops per time. Um, the, 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 the telling picture here is the raindrops per distance. So if you like, you can think of this as raindrops per step. Um, and don't let the negative here bother you. That just means we're starting to the left of the origin. That doesn't really matter. Oh, right, I can get a, I can get a cursor in here. That's right. Um, that doesn't really, you know, affect things. It certainly doesn't affect the slope. So you can see that red is getting a much greater um, number of raindrops per step than green is. Uh, in fact, we can do a, a, a little slope calculation here. So they tend to level off here. Uh, because they start to leave the um, they start to leave the rain field. Here we've got a vertical value right at 350, so that's nice. And here we've got one right at 165. So yeah, so the red collects just about twice as much as the green does. Sometimes when I run this, it's a little bit more. Sometimes it's a little bit less. Of course, we saw last time adding in the yellow one, uh, it did not really split the difference between the two. It was much closer to the green one. Um, so again, you'd have to do this many, many times and average it to get, you know, a, a rigorous result. We're just looking at an example here. Um, so yeah, that's how these graphs were created. Again, I would love to see if you've got uh, a, a different case that you've come up with that shows uh, some, some significantly different results. That would be interesting to see. So let me know in the comments below or tweet me at Let's Code Physics. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.